is by shutting down our state's oil production. We are now dependent on foreign nations to buy and import their oil. We pay almost a billion taxpayer dollars per year to do this. Why? We have the richest oil reserves here in California and seven miles off the coast in the Pacific Ocean. With balance and careful safety guidelines, we can become much more energy independent, create thousands of jobs in our state, and above all, keep California tax dollars here. Third, I will fight to strengthen the rights of parents to reclaim and maintain their own God-given authority over their own children. In recent years, the Democratic Party in Sacramento has launched an all-out assault on parental rights in the areas of education and medical consent. Sacramento needs to be reminded who actually has the best interest of each individual child as a top priority. It is, of course, the parents. <coughs> Political intrusion into this sacred parent-child relationship will never be tolerated. This fight will continue. While politicians rant and scramble for the approval of drag queens in our libraries, most of California voters are wondering, when will our public schools be fixed? In the 1960s, California ranked fifth in per-student funding. As of 2019, 19, we ranked 43rd out of 50 states. This is the reason the politicians are looking to remove part of the property tax caps given under Prop 13. As we all know, property taxes are how our schools are funded. Unfortunately, even if the split roll plan for Prop 13 passes in November, most of the money will go to counties and local city governments to be used in other ways, ways that they say might benefit education. Chances are much greater that they will go to pay unfin unfunded pension programs and our schools will be cheated once again. We can make a stand and set our great state right again. Will you help me? I need volunteers and donations to get me to Sacramento and make these changes. Please go to my website, voteforpedro.com, or reach me via my contact information on my business card and flyers that I brought here today. I look forward to hearing from you and serving you in our state assembly. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Human Salem. I am running for state senate in District 27. District 27 uh, encompasses the West San Fernando Valley, West to Malibu, uh, parts of Ventura County, including Simi Valley, Moore Park, Thousand Oaks, Newberry Park, Westlake, uh, and north to Santa Clarita. Do we have anybody here from those parts? Yeah. Great. Right. So you all have a little bit of homework for me. You have to educate your friends, your neighbors, your family on the realities of what is going on right now in California. I'm talking to everybody, people, friends, family every day. And it's shocking to me what they don't know about what is really going on. And chief among them is, for me, homelessness, immigration, taxes, certainly Prop 13. But we have a problem. The problem is when they start to change the definition of terms, it becomes very difficult to have a reasonable debate on the issues. I'm an immigrant. I come from uh, my parents, I was born in Tehran, came here when I was four years old. I don't know any different than the Valley. Uh, I've never hyphenated my name in terms of Iranian American, I've been in America. America's all I know. But they changed the definition of terms. Uh, I believe illegal immigration is a problem. And, you know, when we have a governor who has opened up the floodgates and said, come in and come all, and the California taxpayers who are already taxed to death as it is, we'll take care of you. Well, A, it's not sustainable, and B, it's not fair. As hard as we work to continue to pay more to people that come here that I don't believe want to be a part of the American story. When my family came here, <clears throat> everyone contributed and continues to contribute. Look, I'm a business owner, my father's a business owner, I come from a long line of business owners and entrepreneurs. We came to be a part of America, not to take apart America. Oh, <laughs> and as hard as we work, we have to look at the way that the state of California treats businesses. You know, the evil corporations and all, sure. Well, you know what? How many of us work for or are associated with 
or work for a company that supplies an evil corporation. I own a small business. I've always wanted to be independent. I enjoy doing what I do. <clears throat> I run a very successful fashion design company here in, in, the, in the Valley. Excuse me. <clears throat> and, um, you know, five years in, in this industry, I've, I've been in the fashion industry for 15 years, but five years as a factory owner, we design and manufacture right here, right here in the, in the San Fernando Valley. And I'm one of the founding pioneers of the American made movement for apparel. And there's a lot of great opportunities. The fashion industry in Los Angeles, some of you may or may not know, is a $17 billion a year industry just for the city of LA. At one time, we had 9,000 apparel factories in Southern California. We're down to 2,500, and a lot of those are dwindling away. We were a massive economic engine to Southern California. Along with aerospace, along with electronics, with automotive, we had the GM plants in Van Nuys. The San Fernando Valley was once the 10th largest economy in the country. Today, we don't do anything in the valley anymore. That's 60% of my district. So as a business owner, I can tell you straightforward that with the tax and regulations, and now with AB5, which has had a significant impact on my business, uh, they are changing the goalposts, making it difficult for businesses to survive, raising wages, which no one talks about. It's not so much that we don't want to pay our workers more money, sure. I wrote an article for the LA Times in an op-ed calling out Mayor Garcetti saying, if your objective is to put more money into the hands of the people, then meet me halfway. I'll raise the wage. You cut the tax. He didn't do that. Right? So with AB5, I think that's probably one of the biggest gifts we've been given as Republicans because now we have a very vocal, creative community now that sees it. And I've been tweeting this out lately that Finally, the rest of you get to see how Sacramento has been treating businesses for the last 25 years. Good, I'm glad. Now, now, now they've pissed off the wrong group. Yeah. <laughs> so, I hope to reach across the aisle to the reasonable Democrats that have been impacted by AB5, and by the way, plenty of other issues, uh, that will want to come and meet me in the middle and say, it is now time for all Californians, regardless of your party, to do what's right for the state. It's no longer a fight of Democrats versus Republicans. It's a fight of our way of life versus socialism. Yes. And I've been seeing this lately on, on different memes on, on, on Twitter and Instagram. You know, you can vote your way into socialism, but you have to shoot your way out. <laughs> oh, they're taking our guns away. <laughs> so, <laughs> those are other issues. <clears throat> I am a very, very strong proponent of parental rights. I don't believe that government under any circumstances has any right to tell a parent how to raise their child. And the government, wants, government in California wants to inject themselves into every square inch of our lives. Again, going back to AB5, if, if an employer and an, and, and an independent contractor agree to services and agree on a wage, the government should not get in between that transaction. And that's what private enterprise is all about. You know, if, if, if two people in the marketplace want to shake hands and make a deal, the government's role is to enforce contracts, not to create barriers to entry for employees or workers or employers. I now have to cut away about 25% of my service offering because I can no longer use an independent contractor. So they eliminate my ability to make money and make it more difficult on the tax and regulation side. That's not without reason that 13,000 businesses have left California since 2008. Now, that's 13,000 businesses that on the average of 50 employees, let's say, you know, do the math, that's hundreds of thousands of people left without work. What does that do to the homeless population? You know, if, if Sacramento was serious about solving the homeless problem, partner with businesses, work with us, help us expand, help us hire people off the streets. I can certainly use a few people in my warehouse, right? But no, they make it more and more difficult, and then they pass the laws and regulations, and then they create these problems, and then they build industrial complexes around the problems, right? You guys are uh, familiar with LASA, uh, LA, uh, LA Homeless Services, Administration, I believe that's what it stands for. 600 employees making Wall Street grade salaries and, and benefits. It's an industrial complex. 
The head of Lhasa, who recently resigned after five years of making $250,000 base salary, pats himself on the back for doing such a wonderful job. What has he done? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> we have three people a day dying in the streets of Los Angeles. And meanwhile, we have uh, probably hundreds, if not thousands of people a day coming into California because of all the freebies that we're giving away. Boy, if I was homeless, I'd be aiming straight to California, no matter what part of the world I was in. We, the taxpayers, are on the hook for everything. For the illegal immigrants, for the vagrants, the drug addicted, the mentally disabled, who do need help. Realistically, these folks need help. But the methods in which we are going about it are a thousand percent wrong. And to wait a year and a half, now I believe Garcetti just broke ground on some new facility that only houses 74 or so people, which won't be ready for a year and a half. If three people a day are dying in the streets, at the cost of 1,500 dead people, we'll have 74 beds in about a year and a half. And Trump said it before, and it applies so well to California. We are being led by very stupid, stupid people. <laughs> So, at the risk of my business, at the risk of my industry, at the risk of friends who have lost a few along the way in the last several months, I am running for state senate because I believe in California, I believe in all of us, and I believe that we can once and for all put this state back on track. We were here before in the 70s. I don't know, may or may or may not remember, we were here before. And we had, at one time after the 70s, uh, this, what I consider this panacea of, of, of Governor Pete Wilson and Mayor Richard Reardon, which was an amazing time to be in Los Angeles. I think the Lakers maybe won a few games or championships in that period of time as well. Um, it can happen again. Everything is cyclical. But this time, folks, we have to get out. We cannot let them call us names. I am not a racist or a slave owner because I own a business. You folks are not racist because you own property. You know, that's, that's the next big thing they're coming after is your homes. Uh, and not just for Prop 13, by the way. Uh, our, our lovely friend up in Sacramento, Scott Wiener, says if you own a home, you're racist. You heard about this? Yeah, somebody mentioned, anybody with the name Wiener in politics? <laughs> Who was our other friend in New York? Yeah. <laughs> He's in prison? Yeah. I, I think he got out or something. Uh, in California, everything's legal. Uh, <laughs> we live in this little bit of a twilight zone kind of environment today where they say, you know, everything's kind of flipped upside down. What was once legal is now illegal. You know, a criminal has all the rights in the world, but the business owner, homeowner, citizen is the criminal now, you know? So we want to correct this ship, put it back on track, it's doable, we need all of you guys to help out, and, and what I tell people is my campaign is so grassroots, you know, uh, I put my money in, my family's putting a few dollars in, I've had some clients, out of state clients, put a few dollars in, saying, look, we want you to continue your craziness in California, because whatever happens in California ends up going throughout the rest of the country, AB5 is now being discussed, there's some variation of it, it's being discussed in New York and New Jersey, yeah. Yeah, so, um, we need donations, we need volunteers, we need everything you guys can do to help us out. And I kind of hate to say it, folks, this kind of might be our last swing at the bat. Because, I'll tell you why, um, I'm not, I, I studied history in an undergrad, and I've always had an interest in politics, but I never thought I would run. You know, I'm happy doing what I do, being a business owner. Um, but it, come, it came to my attention that there were about 10 to 15 assembly seats in, in LA County running unopposed. People aren't even running against these Democrats. So when I say this may be our last swing at the bat, you know, if, if I was running, Henry Stern, our state senator, would, would glide right into re-election unopposed. Um, so he has a huge war chest. He's got the Democrat money behind him. He's got union money behind him. He's got everything behind him. I have logic and reason behind me. I've got all you guys behind me, and I know we can win this election. So please help contribute. Remember, Salem is my last name, and Salem 2020 is my website. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, we have some extra time because Rob is not here. So does anyone have questions? Questions, not 
speeches, questions for our uh, candidates. Over here. This is not for the candidates, but I wondered if um, our group could get a hold of the, the movie No Safe Spaces and perhaps show it to, as a group. We could look into that. That's the one that we went and saw at this. We could look into it for sure. Absolutely. Yes, okay. Excuse me. Um, I was hoping one of the representatives could explain the difference between Prop 13. Now, I'm hearing different stories. Is it true Prop 13, they're trying to take that away? Is it strictly for business, or is that for homeowners? Right. So, Prop 13 was a landmark piece of legislation that was passed in 1976 uh, by the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association to protect all properties, home, uh, residential, and commercial, by putting a one and a quarter percent cap on uh, the value of the home at the time, or the value of the property at the time in which you purchased it. So, my parents live in a house that they bought in 1976 in Chatsworth, so they print, they're paying property tax on about $80,000. <laughs> That's what it costs. Uh, the neighbor who just sold the house and somebody moved in who bought the house for 800000 is paying property tax on 800000 So there's a disparity in it. But that's what protects the homeowners who are retired and don't have additional means of income. Well, the way it's going to go is the split rule says, with deceptive language, we want to raise more money for schools, and anytime they put schools on there, everybody rushes to vote for it to help schools. By the way, what happened to the lottery money? 10% was supposed to go to schools. We should have Harvard professors teaching our kids at this point. Um, it's a, they're gonna say, look, we just want to help schools, but we want to tax commercial, so business uh, you know, buildings. And by dividing commercial and residential, but, if you, any of you have experience with California politics, you'll know that that's just a trial balloon because there are a lot more residential dwellings, properties, than there are commercial in California. You know, just as you're flying into LAX and if you're lucky to have a window seat, look out the window. There are, for every one commercial building, there's like 200 homes. <laughs> and that's what they're going to reach for. So if the trial balloon works and, and the voters say, great, let's raise taxes to save the children, which of course they won't. <laughs> then you can rest assured that they will raise your taxes on your property, home, home property. Yes. Even if they do raise it, uh, oh, yeah. even if they do raise it on businesses, the businesses will will put that, you know, the cost. Yeah, the cost. Right. So, so the, the question is, is yeah, if they do raise property taxes on businesses, then that business, no matter what that business is, will have to pay more in rent. Uh, which then translates to higher prices of goods in the marketplace, whether it's a grocery store or whatever the case might be. I have a much more horrifying view of that because as a business owner, I can't pay any more for anything. And there's a point at which we just say, I'm done, I'm done. Um, I'm walking away, I've made my money, you know. Um, so if there's an outpouring of people or businesses leaving already, and then a tremendous amount of others just walk away and quit, retire, whatever the case might be, you got to have a lot of empty properties in California. That's when I believe the government will come, buy everything for pennies on the dollar, and convert everything into housing, and create socialized housing. That might, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but in this day and age in California, I wouldn't put it past them. Speaking of socialism, uh, I don't know if I touched on this before. Uh, SB 187 already uh, passed the legislature last year. That is for public banks. Public banks are exactly what they sound like. That is the State Bank of Moscow is coming to California. And what I mean by that is they have given themselves, this legislature has given themselves permission to reach into our tax dollars, set up their own private bank ostensibly for, for affordable housing. Uh, it was sponsored by uh, two assembly members from uh, Los Angeles County. They have exempted themselves from all corporate regulations. They've exempted themselves from the Brown Act. They've exempted themselves from anything that would allow the public to see what our tax dollars are being used for. Public banks are, exist only in one other place in the United States, that is in North Dakota, because there is not enough population, it's too rural, and they had to do something to be able to give a standardized bank. 
Uh, public banks were tried to be, they tried to start public banks in 22 other states and it was roundly rejected because this is a socialized bank and it's already here in California. <laughs> this is very enlightening. So yeah, as, as you said, um, so with the government that with after 10 years and $88 billion could not lay down one mile of high-speed rail, do you trust this, these people with your money? No. Is it FDIC insured? I don't think so. And so when you deposit your money into the, this, in the Bank of Los Angeles, or whatever the case might be, uh, and you find out one day, ooh, poof, it's all gone, well, who's going to bail them up? Taxpayers again. It is a horrible idea. Horrible. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'll stand up just, I'll stand up just. I, I have one uh, clarification or point. So it's a little disingenuous, I think, going back to the Prop 13 when they say, you know, corporate versus residential. Don't apartment, aren't apartment buildings owned by corporations? Yes. So that's residential as well, correct? So the, the rents will be raised on apartment. Well, it's because of that? Oh, yeah. Not that kind. Yeah. Well, they passed a law, they passed a law that now is, to some degree, some rent control. So, if you own a property, let's say you own a, a, a commercial apartment building, you cannot raise tenant rents more than 5%. Plus inflation. Plus the, plus the 3% roughly inflation. Um, so, that puts you in a very difficult position because now your expenses went up, but your ability to cover those expenses have been limited. limited. Uh, so, again, well, or, or, yeah, yeah, or, or just sell it off and again, sell, sell it. So this is the most reasonable thing to do. Take your money out, just go. Um, there's a couple questions for you. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably loud enough. Okay. My question, the thing that worries me most is how do we overturn all this garbage that's been <laughs> so we have a super majority in California uh, legislature, I'm sure you all know. So at this point, they can pass whatever they want. We have to first break the super majority and just put a, uh, a stop sign to the nonsense. The way to do that is to vote in some Republicans. I understand it only takes three or four senators, like myself, to break the supermajority in the state senate. I'm not sure what the number is in the assembly, but it's probably a lot. Yes, we, there's 80 and there are 16 Republicans right now. 80 versus 16. Oh, 80 seats total and 16 of them are Republicans. Yeah, there's one independent, so I think that leaves 61. Definitely. And there's 15 assembly seats in Southern California, Los Angeles County going unpublished. So, at least in the Senate, it takes three or four to break the supermajority. So the first thing is to put it, now we're not going to be able to run any of our agendas, and I don't think Republicans have an agenda. You know, we don't have this fairy tale of utopia that we're trying to impose on everybody, like the Democrats are with global warming and this and that, and environmentalism. Uh, but first, we have to break the supermajority, and then over a course of hopefully less than a generation, get some more Republicans in. <laughs> you know, every, every four years at least, you know. You know for state senate every two years for um, assembly. So we first the first thing's first we've got to break the super majority. And it's so easy to do right now. And in my, my uh, opponent, Henry Stern, as I'm talking to people, it's not very well liked even among Democrats. Uh, specifically but specifically because of the vaccine issue. So my, my race is actually pretty winnable. I'm the same way Lauren. Yeah? Yeah, I, I have socialist Democrats who come up to me and say we will vote for you strictly because of the vaccine issue. Yeah, the vac okay. AB5 and the vaccine issue could be our biggest gifts. Yeah. So, yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have Eric Kelly uh, running. Uh, like, like, like all Republicans right now, Eric Early and myself and all of us here, we, we need the funding. The money wins. And you know, Republicans, generally, I don't know if you can hear me better. Republicans, we're the ones that actually bring in the money. We're the ones that work. We're the job creators and whatever. It's the socialists that take a handout. So, how is it that they have all the money and we don't? Unions. Yeah. So I think that you know if we are serious, we we have to you know start going into our pocketbooks a little bit and helping candidates. Eric Early, hopefully he can win Schiff. I don't know. I mean, Schiff is in a very very you know Democrat territory. 
he's up against, you know, I was on the, uh, I was on KBC with Dr. Drew a couple of weeks ago before his show was off, went off the air, which is a tragedy because he was such a proponent of talking about the homeless issue. And uh, I'm being told now that he's probably thinking about running, but he's, it's going to be tough for him because he's missed all the deadlines. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, he's, he's getting in late. Yeah, he'd have to be a write-in, which yes. would be tough. Yeah. Yeah. something I went to a, a meeting where Mark Lund spoke and there's a couple of things that I think are important that he said about the election coming up so one is that they passed a law and I don't I'm not an expert on this so we can look this up but they, they passed a law that you can show up at the polls on the voting on the day of the vote and register to vote and vote and this is one way that I believe that they are, they are getting their people out because they are going and picking them up, they're going, you know, who knows who they're, who they're getting, and getting them to register to vote, and then they vote. And then the other thing he said, and he recommended, and maybe your club can do, is they, he said adopt a poll. You can adopt a poll because the, when the unions get involved in elections, you have to be very, very, you, we have to watch the polls and we have to make sure that everything is done. I mean, we live in the United States of America. There shouldn't be any shenanigans going on at the polls. So if, if your club adopts, if our club, I'm a member too. Yes. <laughs> if our club adopts the poll, then the club runs that poll both for the primary and you can also run, work the poll for the, uh, the, the November election. And so then that's just a huge service to the community because we know for sure that that one poll, it was, it was uh, run by, run properly, that there were no, nothing, I'm not confusing anyone, but stuffing ballots or anything like that, or someone coming in and, and you know, giving 5,000 uh, ballots because they can do, they can do um, ballot harvesting. And so the, all of that can be taken, notes can be taken on all of that, and then the office can, can then, uh, the, the Ventura County Office of, off, office of Election can then look over those and make sure that they were legal and appropriate. So if there's no recording, then they don't know what to look into. So if, if, it's just something for the club to think about. Would someone like to take that on, looking into our club? Uh, I'll get the contact. Okay. Um, yeah, but we're saying for our club to do it. So if there's someone here who would be interested in, in spearheading that, I think that would be amazing. And I think that all of us need to pay close attention to what we've heard today, that we need to get in there and we need to get into the fight. We need to volunteer. We need to dig deep into our pockets. We need to adopt a poll. We need to be involved with election integrity. We need to be paying attention because for too long we haven't been, and we see what's happened in California because of that. So, um, so thank you so much to our. Oh, okay. Um, 50/50 opportunity drawing. We want to do that. Thank you. I would have forgotten. Did everyone get a chance to do that? Get them all off. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. I have several things I'm going to do today. I feel generous. I believe I'm giving away three things. Okay. Ready, boy.